I want to give a special welcome to uh, those of you who are watching from the UK as you and from Ireland and uh, from uh, perhaps other parts of uh, Western Europe as uh, we take a look at Hurricane Ophelia. Now, it isn't unusual for uh, remnants of tropical systems to impact parts of Western Europe. It does happen from time to time. Usually, though, they come in from the west, uh, and this one is coming up more from the south, and that, what's, that, that is what makes this different. Ophelia is still a hurricane with 100-mile-an-hour winds. The eye has gotten a little bit cloud-filled, but you could still pick out the center here as it uh, moves now toward the northeast, and it's starting to accelerate a little bit. So uh, we're going to see this pass very close to the Azores, and then from there, it turns more north-northeast. Now, I want to show you, this is the um, one of the hurricane models, the HWRF model. And you're going to see the geography and the storm change as we move forward. But the Azores are right up to the north of Ophelia at this point. And you can see Portugal and Spain now coming into the picture. And this is now Sunday morning at 7 a.m. And Ophelia turning north is still moving north northeast and by the early morning hours on monday we're going to start to see gales move uh, into uh, ireland with the center just offshore now at the same time i just want to point out that we're probably going to see ophelia make a transition over into a non-tropical or extra tropical storm in other words it'll behave much like storms do in the north atlantic rather than um, true tropical storms, the wind field is going to spread out, the gales are going to spread out, and by uh, 8 a.m., uh, well, I'm sorry, this is at uh, 12 Z, so noontime on Monday. i got to remember, i got to translate the time now. Uh, I'm always used to uh, using Eastern time, but uh, this is uh, noontime. <clears throat> We're going to see Ophelia passing right over the northwestern corner of Ireland on this model, and then from there, as it begins to move uh, into Scotland, and then beyond that, uh, it goes eventually into Norway and Sweden as a weakening low. I think that's reasonable. All the weather models show this. I want to show you real quick the GFS because I think uh, the real issue here is going to be more wind than rain because if it begins to behave more like a, trop a, a non-tropical system, uh, you're going to see the rain north and west of the low track and more wind to the east. And here you have it on the GFS, pretty much the same as the HWRF. It's a shade further to the west, keeping the center just offshore, Ireland and Scotland. The European cuts it right across Ireland, cuts it in half, and then right up into northern England and into Scotland. Uh, this is for um, Monday during the daytime. Uh, and when we look at the wind field here, real quick, you can see there's not that much rain. All the rain stays out to the east of the center. So if the center takes the Europeans track, which would be um, something like this, then you're going to see some heavy rains uh, over uh, north and west of that low track over <clears throat> the western part of Ireland and possibly into Scotland. But if it stays just offshore, you probably won't see that much rain. You'll see more wind than, than anything else. And then after that, it does the same thing where it moves up uh, into uh, Norway and Sweden. And I'll show you the European, which is we're not able to see the, the same <clears throat> parameters on the European as we're able to see on the other models. But this is at uh, noontime on Monday uh, with, uh, with uh, Ophelia just getting ready to touch Ireland and then by noontime Tuesday, it's moving out of Scotland, so it basically cuts the island in half. So stick around. We're going to talk some more about Ophelia and then look at some other, uh, some other factors going on in weather-wise across the United States. So just hang on one sec. 